In this video, I'm going to find the Galois group of the polynomial x to the fifth minus 4x plus 2. So let's get started. So the first thing that we want to notice about this polynomial is that it is irreducible by Eisenstein's criterion. So Eisenstein's criterion tells us that if we have any polynomial like this, if there is a prime p, so that p doesn't divide the leading coefficient of the polynomial, and then if p does divide all of the other coefficients of the polynomial, and then if p squared fails to divide the constant term, then the polynomial is irreducible. So you can see that uh, that's true with this polynomial by setting p equal to 2, because 2 doesn't divide the leading coefficient. Uh, it does divide the other coefficients, but the square of 2 doesn't divide this number. Okay, So this is uh, an irreducible polynomial. So a fact about irreducible polynomials is that their Galois group, so I'll denote the Galois group of this polynomial by G. So the uh, Galois group of an irreducible polynomial is transitive. So the Galois group acts on the roots of the polynomial by permuting them with each other. And as long as the polynomial is irreducible, uh, there's only one orbit. So for every root of the polynomial, there's some, for, for every root of the polynomial and then for every other root of the polynomial, there is an element of the Galois group that maps the first root to the second root. So there's only one orbit. Uh, so what we can recall is um, we have uh, this theorem called the orbit stabilizer theorem. And what does that tell us? It tells it, uh, us that when we have any uh, group action uh, of a group G acting on a set X, that the size of uh, the group is equal to the size of the orbit of X for any element uh, X in the set X. Uh, and then times the index of the stabilizer. So this is all of the elements that fix x. Um, so this part isn't really important um, in this example. What is important is uh, the size of the orbit, uh, because we know that for this particular polynomial, um, the Galois group acts transitively. And so for any um, root of the polynomial that you care to choose, the size of this orbit is 5. And that's because there's five roots of the polynomial. Um, so that means that the size of G uh, is divisible by 5. And um, 5 is prime. So Cauchy's theorem tells you that there's an element of G of order 5. Because whenever the order of G is divisible by a prime, G contains an element that has that same order. OK, but uh, G is contained in S5. So G is living inside of S5. And uh, the only elements of S5 that have order 5 are uh, 5 cycles. So there's some, without loss of generality, I'll write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is in G. Because it doesn't really matter, like, however I uh, choose to um, order the roots of F, it's kind of arbitrary. So I might as well just write this for my 5 cycle. Great. So we've um, said a lot about the Galois group, and we haven't actually had to uh, really say anything about the roots of the polynomial so far. So this is all just uh, theory. 
Um, but now, if we think a little bit more about the roots of this polynomial, um, what can we say about that? Well, we know that the derivative of this polynomial is 5x to the fourth minus 4. And we know that um, this is equal to 0 at two points. Right, so it's equal to 0 at these two points. So we're going to use this to say more about the roots of f, because uh, there are two possible critical points of f, and there are these two points right here. So what does this tell us? Well, if you um, plug these numbers into the original polynomial f, you'll see that um, at this point, you get a positive value for f. And at this point, you get a negative value for f. So at one of these points, it's positive, and at one, it's negative. And um, we know that f is a polynomial, so it's continuous. So it has this kind of shape, right? So there must be a point um, in between these two points where f crosses the x-axis. And then the other thing we know about f is that um, it has odd degree. And so we know it's n behavior, right? We know that it goes to negative infinity over here, and we know that it goes to positive infinity over here. So the only um, possibility is that f has three uh, real roots, right? Because it has a turning point here, it has a turning point here, here it's positive, here it's negative. Uh, and we know that it can't have more than three roots in R, because if it had more than three roots, uh, it would have additional turning points. Um, and there's only two. So that's great. So this tells us that F has three real roots. And if it has three real roots, it has, uh, sorry, it has two complex roots. And so what can I say about a polynomial that has exactly two complex roots? Well, I can say that its Galois group contains complex conjugation. Right, so the Galois group contains uh, the Galois automorphism that switches the complex roots and fixes the real roots of f. Right, and so this tells me that uh, there is... I'll just call it AB, right? So there's some kind of two cycle in G, uh, right? Because uh, whatever the complex roots are, there's an, a Galois automorphism that swaps them. And so if you think of G as being contained in S5, this is kind of what this would look like as a, a, a permutation in S5. Great, so now the two things that we know is that G contains a five cycle, and we also know that it contains a basic transposition. So as an exercise, if I have a subgroup of S5, and it contains a five cycle, and it contains a transposition, then it's equal to S5. So G is equal to S5. And this is true um, actually for any, um, any of the symmetric groups Sn, where n is prime, as long as you know that the Galois group contains a p-cycle, and then as long as you know that it contains a basic transposition, uh, it forces the Galois group to be equal to Sp. And that's just to do with the fact that you can take the basic transposition and you can conjugate it by the p-cycle and you can get other transpositions. So yeah, so that proves that G is equal to S5, and that's it, we're done.